Hi, this is Aiden and this is yet another developer screencast provided to you by Tafex Solutions. So if you like what I do, make sure to follow me on Twitter by pressing here and subscribe to this channel by pressing down here somewhere. So this week we're gonna take a look at uh, logging with ASP.NET Core. More specifically, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at logging with something called Serilog and Seek or SEQ. So let's get right to it. So what we've got in front of us is a brand new uh, ASP.NET Core project. I've just gone ahead and pressed uh, File New Project and uh, uh, this project gets scaffolded up for us. And if we run it, we have a simple web app with a home about and a contact page and nothing more to it. And what we're gonna focus on now is logging. So if we go ahead and run this, uh, using the using uh, the .NET uh, ex ex executable, uh, we're gonna get a bit more a richer logging. So I got the console here on a different screen, but we can see now as the application boots up, we can see more uh, information about what's actually happening behind the scenes. And if we press the about uh, link, we can see that the about uh, page got requested and served. So uh, we're gonna start by adding Serilog and logging this to a file and take a look at, at how that looks. And the next step is to uh, use something called uh, uh, seek to get structured logging. Uh, and we're gonna investigate uh, and see what that means more in depth uh, later on. So for now, let's just come over to the code and add a new uh, service or configure a service to begin with. So to the log a factory, we can see that we are logging to the console, but we're gonna also go ahead and log uh, by adding serial log. And to be able to do that, we're gonna need to add a couple of packages. So let's open up project.json and come down to, at the end of our dependencies uh, definition here and add. So we're gonna add serial log and then extensions logging and we're gonna get the latest RC which will be this guy right here and we're also gonna want to so just by doing this let's make sure that this gets downloaded we're gonna restore our project uh, right and now we can press control period and we can say use serilog so we haven't configured a uh, serilog yet so we just uh, added it to the logger factory. So let's go ahead and in the startup uh, method of our application, configure a new logger. So we can set the logger on the static, pro uh, static property logger of log uh, to a new logger configuration. And we're gonna set the minimum level to information and then we're just gonna create a logger. So right now, we don't use any syncs. So syncs are, uh, so we add different syncs to be able to log to different kind of sources. So, be, so to, to log to a rolling file, we add a rolling file sync. And to use seek for structured logging, we're gonna add the seek sync. So now we're gonna have to come back to our project.json again and add a couple of more uh, packages. So we're gonna add serilog and then go syncs. We are looking at nuget here and browsing the packages available and we're gonna add the rolling file uh, sync. And we're gonna add the latest RC. And by doing so, let's also go ahead and add uh, the other sync we know we're gonna use. Uh, we're gonna use uh, something called seek right we're going to take the latest rc there as well so now we have all the packages we want to use in this screen cost uh, and let's go ahead and configure these uh, syncs on our logger here so to write to a rolling file we just simply use the fluent api and go ahead and write write to and then uh, rolling rolling file and we should get this with 
uh, the Visual Studio help, control period, and we add, we're going to add the using Serilog Sync's rolling file uh, using the directive at the top, and now we're going to need to pass in a file name. So we're going to log the file called log, and then we're going to append the date and call this dot text. And we're going to also provide a second parameter to this, which will be uh, the minimum level to log to. So uh, we can pass in a different minimum level here, or we can stick with information. So let's just stick with log event level. Uh, and pass in information. And by doing so, uh, if we fire up the application now, we press Control F5. So we're still using the uh, .NET XE. Let's see, we got some build error here. Cannot open, it's being used by another process. Yes, we're gonna need to kill that process. Let's kill that and run it again. So we can switch back to IS Express uh, as well, but let's just see what happens here. Uh, so now I got this on the second screen again. We are still logging to the console, but if we take, take a look in our uh, Visual Studio, we should see that a, a file is uh, created uh, at, the, at the root level of our application. We can see that we have created a file called log and then today's date.txt. And uh, let's see if we can open this up or, it's, or if it's being used. No, we can't open it right now. So let's kill this and take a look at how this looks. So here we can see the information uh, that got logged when we fired up our application, uh, which is basically, basically the same that we saw in our uh, console output. So this is fine and all, but uh, when we log a, a lot of things here, it's gonna be quite messy to try to follow the application flow from a, a rolling text file. Uh, so let's add this other sync. Uh, which will provide structured logging for us instead. So here we can, as well as we're logging to a rolling file, we can also write to SEQ, and then we're gonna need to provide a, a, an uh, URL that, uh, that is the event stream that Seek will listen to. So to begin with, uh, what you're gonna need to do is, you're gonna need to come to Seek's uh, web page get seek.net and uh, you're gonna need to download uh, an uh, MSI and once you do that and install it you can configure it but by default we're gonna have a local server listening to port uh, 5341 and it's gonna and you can browse the this endpoint and we can also write to this endpoint so uh, seek is free but by default, it's not that useful for other purposes than developing on your local machine. So the way we write this log is by providing a, the URL to our seek instance here in our configuration. You can see how this won't make sense to write an open endpoint without authentic authenticating ourselves uh, in, produc in production. But let's just see what happens for now. So we're gonna write to seek as well. And let's switch to IS Express just for fun to make sure that it works with that as well. IS Express hits Control F5. And now our application boots up. And let's press a couple of links. See, so go to about in the contact page. And if we come back to our local uh, seek instance here, we can see that these events got logged. Uh, and what they mean by structured logging is that this is uh, searchable. You can use SQL-like syntax here to search uh, what's happening in your application instead of just uh, seeking for things in text files or event logs in Windows. So for instance here, we got something called an request ID. So if you want to see all the logs that were associated with this request ID, we can go ahead and just click the click this icon right here and say find. And we can see that now we are showing all the log posts that are associated with this request ID. Uh, and we can do a lot of things here. Uh, and we can also log uh, 
uh, complete object structures which will be JSON serialized and searchable. So for instance, if we have a person class and we log the entire person, then we'll be able to search for persons that were logged uh, with the first name named Aiden, for instance. Let's talk a bit about uh, what uh, I didn't like about this. So by default, uh, with the, the free license, uh, you can write uh, to this, uh, everyone can write to the stream right here. So that's not very production uh, friendly. Uh, you're gonna need to go ahead and get a trial license to begin with, activate Seek, uh, and then you can create API keys that will be needed to be, which the application that logs needs to provide to authenticate itself itself. Uh, so along here, let's switch back to the code. So along with this, you can go ahead and pass a couple of options here. And we can see that we can pass something called an API key. And also now we can see everyone can enter uh, this, this page. So let's say you hosted this in Azure at some websites.net. Anybody can browse that. So to enable user authentication to log in here and search the logs, you're gonna need a production license as well. Uh, so I tried those different things. I created different uh, production environments. I had uh, one API key for, for staging, another for production and one, another for dev. Uh, and I enabled user authentication and it worked uh, really well. But one major downside was that I needed to spin up a separate uh, virtual machine uh, to install this uh, MSI uh, to be able to log to. So to have, uh, <laughs> so besides the web app that I'm paying for, I'm gonna need to pay for yet another virtual machine just for logging, which simply wasn't worth it for my pet project yet. So there are, pros and cons by using this. And for now, there is no way to host this uh, uh, Seek server uh, in another web app, which will be uh, quite more optimal for the common developer. But uh, enough about that. Yeah, one, one other thing that I actually noticed that I tried to contribute to the GitHub repo was that uh, all the examples pretty much log over HTTP, but in production, maybe you're, maybe you're gonna be logging or you will probably be logging more sensitive information. So uh, we're gonna want to log over HTTPS. And then we're gonna probably create our self-signed certificate for our virtual machine. And by doing that, we won't be able to log uh, to from an ASP.NET Core application and running in a web app uh, because the self-signed uh, F certificate isn't trusted. So I actually created a pull request in the GitHub repo that allows us to pass in our own, own request handler uh, to validate our, our own uh, um, self-signed certificates. So if you go ahead and check out their GitHub repo, uh, let's see here, serlog seek. We can see there is one active pull request here, and that's me, uh, where I allow their HTTP client to take an optional HTTP message handler. And that's because we want to be able to pass in our own message handler to uh, validate the uh, certificate callback validation. All right, so let's take a look at how a log actually looks when we try to log a person, for instance. Uh, so let's come back to our a web application. Let's get rid of that. We're gonna use the simplest mode here. And in our home controller, let's just create a class, person. We're gonna have a property, string, first name, string, last name. And then when we hit the, when we hit the, uh, the index page, we're gonna want to log uh, some random person just to see at how we can log entire object that will be JSON serialized, which is pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and create a constructor and resolve an I logger of home controller. Oops, logger. So I'm trying to get used to not using Resharper. Not yet that effective, but it's 
getting there. Uh, private read only a logger. Let's store away a reference to this instance. And then in our index page, just new up a new person. RP is a new person uh, with a first name, Aiden. And the last name should be Tafik, like that. And now we want to log this entire person. So this could be anything really. Uh, but let's go ahead here and use the logger and simply log information and pass in uh, just trying out the logger, right? And then go ahead and create a key for this uh, for the ins instance. So we're gonna pass in an at sign there, which will tell Serilog that this is an object that we are passing in. And now we can just pass in p. So we can save this build. And now we hit our uh, home page. So hopefully something was logged. So let's hit home just once again, and come over to seek. Uh, take away that filter do a new search and we can see here that we got a, a, a log uh, saying just trying to trying out the logger and then we got the entire person object serialized for us and here we can see that uh, we can actually try to search for persons find any value with uh, that uh, so here we find all the log values that uh, has a that has a person logged, which is uh, pre pretty powerful, just that. But we can also go ahead and try to find, uh, let's clear this. So where, where person dot first name equals Aiden. The log becomes searchable in in a way that we we aren't used to by looking in a in a text log file. Uh, it's it's a lot easier to log things this way, uh, and we can search it uh, in a different way. And as we saw here, we can see here that we can also group on the request IDs, which is pretty cool. And um, so this is really powerful. Here we can create a tag person and uh, we can see the values that we, we can search for. Uh, so Serilog Seek is pretty cool, uh, but uh, will I use it in production? Probably not yet. For instance, just the need to spin up a new Azure Virtual Machine to host the Serilog uh, service uh, or the SCQ service is a bit too much to ask for just to get logging. And also it costs, it doesn't cost very much. It's pretty cheap, but still I think a lot of developers aren't ready to pay for this yet. So that was Serilog and Seek uh, very briefly. So if you're interested in these technologies, go ahead and check out the technology. So go ahead and check out their web pages. I'm gonna link to them down in the description. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you missed my previous screencast, make sure to check it out up here somewhere. And until next time, have a nice day, guys. Bye.